So here's a little bit more of a challenging problem, not just calculating uh, phi or calculating uh, exponents with phi. We want to show that it's actually impossible to find an, in an integer n with phi of n equals 14. So there's no way you can, if somebody says, I'm thinking of an integer n, and the number of uh, numbers relatively primed to it between 0 and n minus 1 is exactly 14. That's actually impossible. Um, or another way to say it is th there's no number such that the, the number of reduced residue residues is exactly 14. So here's where it really helps to have the master formula, which we didn't prove in all its uh, glory de glorious detail, um, for phi of any number if you know its prime factorization. And so it looks a little complicated, but all you do is you look at all the primes and all the powers that they appear to in the prime factorization. And for each prime, you get a certain factor in the phi, the answer, the totient, or the, the phi function result. And it's of the form, uh, just like what we had before in the previous problems, take the prime um, to the whatever power it was reduced by one and then times that prime minus one. So for example, let, let me sco scoot up here. Remember, phi of just three to a power alone was, uh, I kind of sometimes like to write it this way as, all of the numbers you could possibly do, and then take out a third of them, right? Take out the, the next lowest power of three. And then if it's just nice, a little nice to factor out that three to the m minus one, and then there's a, the prime minus one. Okay, so let's go back down. Oops, not quite so far. Um, and we would like to get, we ideally like to get, um, phi of our mystery n is two times seven. Well, that two times seven has to match this pattern, and it turns out that we can show that that's impossible. Okay, so let's first focus on uh, that seven. So in particular, seven needs to divide the phi function. Where would that come from? Well, it might come from like one of the primes being seven. Okay, so maybe the situation is to get this to happen, we would want n itself to be divisible by seven. So that suggests a two case kind of situation. It's actually going to be, once we see that, it's actually going to be pretty easy. Okay, so one case is maybe 7 divides n, okay? In other words, 7 is one of the primes in the list of primes in the prime factorization, okay? Here's the thing, though, okay? That means that, say, this, the p1 is 7, for example. You're going to get 7 to some power, maybe just 0. Because, for example, if 7 only appeared to the first power, if, like, a1 was 1, then this would actually go away, just be 1 but you'd still get a six here. No matter what, you're gonna get a six. The fact is this isn't divisible by six. <laughs> so this can't be written as six times a bunch of other integers, okay? So that's what I mean here. Six can't, does not in fact divide 14, which is what we're trying to get, and so that's a contradiction, okay? So this is taking advantage of the fact that primes minus one tend to show up a lot in this formula. They're unavoidable. And the prime seven minus one here does not work. Okay, but okay, so maybe okay, maybe that was a mistake. Silly us. Of course, seven shouldn't divide n. Okay, so now we're going to look at the case where seven doesn't divide n. If we can show that that leads to a contradiction, then we're totally done because we've figured out only the only two cases: either seven divides n or it doesn't. And if they both lead to a contradiction, then we can say this is actually impossible. Okay, so suppose seven doesn't divide n. Okay, well. Uh, the thing is that phi of n, the reason we started focusing on 7 in the first place is phi of n actually does need to have a factor of 7. We didn't want it to have this factor of 6 that was showing up in the first case, but we do need to have a, to have a factor of 7. But how is that going to happen? Okay, so that either comes from a prime to a power over here, okay, but that's not going to happen if 7 is not one of the primes, or it's got to come from one of these prime minus 1 factors. Okay, but wait a minute. The only way that could come in is from an 8, and 8's not prime. Okay, so let me just gloss this a little bit more. Okay, that could only come, assuming that 7 doesn't divide n, it's not going to come from one of the prime powers, it could only come from one of these p, k, minus 1 type factors. Okay, but that's silly, because that's never going to be 7, because 8 um, is not prime. Okay, so... These, these are a little bit more sophisticated problems, but if you start looking at the structure of the kinds of numbers that can come out of this formula, they're really limiting. Um, they have to be a very, very special form of a bunch of primes times prime minus ones, and there's certain numbers that you just can never get from that form. Okay.